Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing or again reviewing Classroom of the Elite. Episode 10 came out yesterday because I'm actually recording this the day after because I couldn't record yesterday because internet issues. But that's besides the point. I'm going to get straight into it. This is probably going to be one of the shorter ones but I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. Now, I always not just say it didn't have its problems, because it very much did. But, I overall, it was really good. I have very few complaints in regards to the episode. Now, pretty much one big thing happens, and then, um, what is it? Oh my god, I'm blinking right now. I remember now. I remember. Um, pretty much one... I, I completely lost my train of thought there. I'm so sorry. Uh, one big thing happens. This is a Hiwata Focus episode, 100%. And then some minor things appear later. Um, pretty much the first one is discussing how they're going to go up against Class A. And they actually talk to one of the other classmates, some from the Ion Koji group, and he brings up the suggestion that uh, they try to get Katsuragi on their side. Because if you don't remember, uh, Katsuragi is not really well liked by Sakuyanagi Arisu, so they're enemies, but because they're in the same class, obviously he has to cooperate, but after... The expulsion of his friend, you know, it's like, oh, well, there's nothing left for me here, dude. So, Class C wants to take this, or so, the person they talk to about it, and he's like, hey, we should talk to him about it and get him on our side. You know, get inside information. And Harita agrees about wanting to get information, but she doesn't like going towards Katsuragi because she doesn't think... One, it's worth it, and two, it's not going to be a good way. Like, the means of acquiring it wouldn't be that good. So there was that going against her as well. So despite Horikta's, um, what is it? She, she says, no, we're not doing that. They go behind her back and talk to Katsuragi. Now, he does give a little bit of information, but... Not much, and he also rejects his proposal. So, despite failing in that regard, he's like, hey, we got some information at the very least, so I guess it's not the end-all, be-all. They do hide this from Harita, though, just so, you know, they're like, eh, she'd probably be really mad if we went behind her back, so let's not do this. Or at least Kiyotaka is the one that suggests that. Um, other than that, this episode's biggest focus was, again, Hiwata, and they did a really, I'm gonna say I enjoyed how they did it. I think they did a really good job doing this. It's my, my minor nitpick, okay, I'll get you my minor nitpick after, but this episode we learned about Hiwata's past. And it's a pretty heavy pass, you know, like his, we find out that in middle school, his friend was getting bullied, but obviously, you know, some of, if you've ever been bullied, or I'm sure you have at least even heard about this, um, bullying can, isn't just black and white as you can step in to save someone. Now, obviously that is the case in, in, in some instances, but in others, you know, like, the bystander mentality is pretty much what I was trying to get to. You know, the feel of being targeted by helping someone, you know. So that feel uh, of Hiwata, you know, he wanted to help his friend, but that feel held him back. And it got to the point where his friend tried to take his own life. Now, thankfully, he survived, but he's been in a coma ever since. And, you know, that, after seeing that, and what followed after was... This didn't change the bullies' attitudes, you know. They were like, oh, I'll play things gone. Time to find a new one. And that disgusted Hiwata. He was utterly disgusted by that. So, after seeing that, 
he took it upon himself to he he pretty much did what Ewan is doing in his class. He wore down not just his class, but the entire year, his entire school year with an iron fist. He was at the top of the totem pole and everyone was below him. He literally was doing what Ewan is doing now. Now, obviously, from what we know in the past two seasons, he wanted to change this and he will be a united front. But because of that... Um, instance in his past and he think and with what happened to Yamaguchi he thinks it's happened again and that he's failed and he's ended up going back to wanting to war the class of an iron fist again like Ryuan now Mi-chan continues to help her uh, she doesn't get through to him unfortunately and we actually get a nice scene I this scene is funny in the light novel uh, with Koenji Koenji actually gets a big scene here well big but she he steps in and talks to Hiwata and helps Mi Chan. Now obviously he can't do much, but he he's kind it's what's important about this is that it's Koenji. You know, someone who's never shown any interest in anything before. So this him like showing interest in this is like just wow, okay. You know, he's actually doing something for once. So it shows Kurenji growing a little bit. And this was a pet peeve I had in regards to Volume 8 because he did help out big time in Volume 8, but they just skipped over that. So while Kurenji still stays his himself, you know, he's it's not it's shown in these in this volume and volume eight that at the very least he will mm -hmm. He can pour through when it matters, you know, and I think that's important to show at least a little bit of um, what is it? not human is it humanity growth, a little bit it adds to his character a bit more, you know. But Kiyotaka sees this scene because along with this, um, Hiwata was actually being physically abusive towards Mi-chan by pushing her down onto the ground, so. After they go to separate ways in that scene, Hiwata ends up going to a park, and this is one of my favorite scenes and moments, especially in this volume. I love this moment. This is where we learn about Hiwata's past, which I mentioned earlier. And the way they did it was really good. The voice acting was on point. The music was on point. The flashback scene, oh my god. The art the shot of that was so good. Holy shit, man. I cannot, I cannot, um, praise that shot enough. That was a really chilling and cool shot of Hiwata. And this is where my nitpick comes in. There was an illustration in this moment in the light novel. Now, if you're familiar with light novels at all, it's, it's a novel, but there are illustrations scattered throughout. And this scene has an illustration. And unfortunately, it was not included. Now, that's not a big deal at all. Because I still think they handled this moment spectacularly. But because that shot, that illustration is actually one of my favorites. Because... As the saying goes, a picture speaks a thousand words, and that illustration honestly can be really powerful because it kind of, if you've ever read the book of Mice and Men, that's what that shot kind of reminds me of. It takes place after um, Kyotaka um, talks to Hiwata and brings him back to his senses. You know, he's really cold and blunt towards him, but that's what actually pulls you out the back from the depths of the spill. And the illustration is just a simple one. It's simple. It's just the two of them sitting on the park bench and we just see the backs. We see um, Ayana Koji sitting up straight and he out the slouch, uh, slouched over and like just defeat and self-deprecation. But, you know, he's back at the very least. And it's such a simplistic drawing, but 
I found it to be really powerful because the emotions captured just in that one single shot can be really shown. Again, a picture speaks a thousand words, and I thought that illustration was really powerful. So I was very sad to see it not get animated. That's my biggest nitpick and my only my major complaint really there was some pacing issues but other than that i have no complaints in regards to anything that happened so honestly that was just about it for the episode just the stuff with korenji and hirata and was the big part um talking chikatsuagi was the other one the other thing that happened this episode was that Kyotaka pushed the chess match to be accepted to Horikta. Um, obviously, we know why that he did that, but we get at the very end we see um, Horikta teaching or not teaching, but getting taught chess by um, Kyotaka. Because even though it's gonna be a fight between Arisu and um, Kyotaka, blanking right there, um, you know. They, uh, Hoikta, who's obviously gonna be the one playing since she's being taught, she's gonna have to know some of the basics and stuff. You know, it's not just gonna be Kiyotaka versus Aisu. Um, they're using um, the classmates for ch ch as <laughs> the representative. That's what I'm trying to say. Hoikta is gonna be representative of Ayana Koji, so even though. He's going to be the one playing. She can't be like completely um, in the dark. You know, that's what the whole point of teaching her is. But other than the pacing issues I had and the minor nitpicks, again, it was a really good episode. I enjoyed it, it's, especially the Hirata stuff. That was just so good. So good. I loved it. I loved it. Um, Very looking forward to next episode. Next episode is where this adaptation is on the line i'd say now if i remember though um this was supposed to get 13 episodes this season so that means 11.5 might get two episodes and if it does that's actually going to be really good because a lot of development happens in 11.5 like a lot so that's going to be interesting to see because I don't think they're going to drag out the exam to two episodes and make 11.51. But who knows? I mean, we still got episodes 11, 12, and 13. That's a whole three right there, man. But that's all. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know your thoughts on the episode. Again, I thought it was a really good one. I was very satisfied this episode. Uh, well, that's again, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.